very warm welcome to the Friends International Cup. It's the fourth edition of the competition. Today we've got Perth Glory, who are hoping to recover from a bit of a mauling in the rain at uh, Passe Gudang. They were beaten 5-0 by the host Friend United. A couple of simple goals given away by Riley Stevenson, the goalkeeper. They did have their moments towards the second half, but it was a disappointing introduction. And they're up against the team who really impressed Estudiantes de la Plata. Runners up last year and four nil victors over Suan Samson Blue Wings. A super performance from Sosa was one of the standout performances, 4-0 at half-time in conditions that got up to 40 degrees centigrade. Lazzarini with the perfect cross, he was the man of the match as Estudiantes gave themselves a perfect start to this tournament. They beat two on 4-0, Friends United 5, Perth Glory 0. Today's match, Estudiantes from Argentina, again in the heat of 4-15, up against Perth Glory. This is how the table looks at the moment. Friends United, top of the pile, courtesy of those five goals, the hat-trick from Reza uh, Hakimi and Estudiantes on second. But the big match will be Friends versus Estudiantes. Estudiantes coming up on Friday. First, though, Estudiantes have got to cope with um, the work of Perth. Chombri versus Kashmir finished a goalless draw. We've got highlights of that in a moment. Remarkable how it finished goalless. Internacional versus Besiktas and frustratingly was abandoned because of a, a problem between the officials. These are the action from the nil-nil draw. Chombri in the blue, really taking it to their Japanese opponents. And somehow this stayed goalless. Alistair Edwards alongside me. Nil-nil, but how? Yeah, very exciting game to really top quality teams and you see one of the highlights here that there was so many goal, goal mark action <laughs> like I say how the ball did not go in was um, you know anyone's guess but it was a top quality game so goal as it was both teams will pick up one point extraordinary goalkeeping disappointment though in the late night match at the 8.30 game Internacional from Brazil in the red they took the lead against Besiktas with this for a free kick. This is under 19. That is world class. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely cool. Then look at the passion amongst everyone after that goal. They really enjoyed that. And then we had the, the I think it was about 20th, 20th minute into the game. And another another great chance. Pazitas with the equaliser, but then. Then was the controversy that we're getting into because the match officials wanted the Besiktas officials to change the colour of their shirts, which clashed with Internacional. For some reason, they wouldn't. Yep. Uh, there will be an inquest about this at 8.30 tonight. Alice, you've got some comments? Yeah, because how hard is it is to put a bib on? I've been on the bench many, many times and we've been asked to either put a, change your shirt or put a bib on. This is a, a young the tournament, the great experiences, and that's, um, to me, a very, very poor example to be shown by the, the, that, that team. Well, we'll find out more about that. There is an official meeting about that tonight to find out how the score will be at the moment though it counts as an abandoned match so the uh, the, the points are avoid at this stage we will find out if there is a score be it 3-0 or 1-0 or, or a replay don't know where we'll fit in a replay in this tight congested uh, fixture list but Chombri and Kashima top of the pile with their one point from one game the next matches in that group are on Thursday today Perth versus Estudiantes coming up 4.15 kickoff, 4 o'clock we're on air, and then Friend United versus Sue on Blue Wings. Clashes with another little game going on in Johor tonight, but Friend United, if you are free, do come down because there are some terrific young players in the Friend United team. So this is Perth Glory arriving in the sun. It's a little bit cooler, there's a little bit more cloud cover than there was on match day one on Monday when it was suffocatingly hot. For Perth, they played in torrential downpour, so the conditions, Alice, are very, very different. Yep, couldn't be any different contrasting uh, conditions. I spoke to uh, John, John, Don, John Gibson, and he was saying that it's a you know, fantastic experience for them, but like I say, different conditions now, steaming hot, they'll be fine. Okay, John, uh, a day of rest yesterday, and you've got a chance to maybe work out with the players on the strategy to be employed today against the boys from Argentina. Yeah, again, we had a we had a good recovery. Um, we looked after ourselves, had a good preparation. Again, we'll continue to do what we do and just get better at our process and, and develop our young players. Looking at the players from uh, Estudiantes, is there any special um, deployment to mark any of the, their you know, key players? Yeah, we've looked at some of their key players. We've given the boys some information and um, we're hoping that they'll take that on board and obviously fill that out to the best of their ability. But we're looking forward to another opportunity to play international um, football. You know, and We're giving a debut to a kid that's a 2002, though he's, so he's 14, so we're going to see how he handles that today. 
So that's the Perth Glory. They're looking as for very much on development. As for International, runners up last year, and they've come here with a very different mindset, Alistair Edwards. They look like they, they want to win this tournament. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. They're, um, you know, that was a fantastic performance um, last game. They, I spoke to the, the coaching staff. They had a really, really good start to the game. They scored four early goals, and then the second half, they, they took, took their foot off the accelerator a little bit. One day of rest yesterday. Uh, any chance to uh, work with the boys on the strategy to be employed today against um, Perth Glory? Sí, bueno, los chicos que han jugado el primer partido hoy la gran mayoría va a descansar. Le vamos a dar la posibilidad a aquellos que, que no han jugado. Así que bueno, eh, estamos confiados en hacer un buen partido. Most of the players who have played in the first match they rest today, so we give chance for the who didn't play in the first match, but we have confidence in them as we have in the other team as well. Any injury problems? I know you're going to use some new players, but looking at the Australian players, is there any tactical that you're going to employ? In first place, no, por suerte, solo cansancio del primer partido. No, no, no hemos tenido lesiones, por suerte. Y con respecto al partido de hoy, hemos visto algo de, de, del rival. Hemos estado presente en, en el partido inaugural. Eh, en realidad, nosotros ya tenemos un objetivo, una idea de juego y que va más allá del rival. Lo mismo que pasó en el primer partido, la idea es prevalecer nuestra idea por sobre la del rival. No major injury problems. We already have our strategy. They're going to keep as they did in the first match. Uh, we have seen the, the Australian play. They have a strong team. We're going to keep our strategy as in the first match. Well, I can give you a little bit of up uh, inside information that there's 10 changes in the Argentine starting lineup ahead of the match with Perth Glory. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes' time. We're all set at uh, Pase Gudang for match day number two in Group A. It's Perth Glory versus Estudiantes de La Plata. The Friends International Cup, the fourth such event that's been hosted by Friends, takes place at Pasagudang and in Johor in 2016. It's an under-19 tournament now. In previous years, it's been under-14, under-15, under-18 last season. So they've gone up through the ages. This is a Perth Glory side. We've got plenty of players aged 17 and under, and they've got one guy who was actually born in the year 2000. Alistair Edwards, yep. how old does that make you feel? <laughs> experience that's about it but I spoke to John Gibson before and he was just mentioning that every single player because Perth is the most isolated city in the whole planet and this is the first time they've had any really international experience for every single player so young they're a young team they're giving up two or three years and, and all the other guys here and um, but it's just a fantastic experience for them they need to do it more often because uh, Perth needs to get I mean Perth glory and the Australian football needs to come into Asia more often to get more experience we had a shot there of the international officials who are here to watch Estudiantes International um, well got their campaign off to a, a start yesterday I won't say a good start because their match was abandoned against Besiktas and we'll hear more about that later on in this tournament uh, but Estudiantes they got off to a thumping 4-0 victory against um, uh, uh, two on Samsung Blue Wings yeah. on match day one and they are feeling so confident about this match against Perth that they've changed 10 of their personnel is that being overconfident um, no I don't think, think so because they use this tournament as a, 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 a to see what players are able to go on to the first team last time they had the, this tournament six players from the, who played in Malaysia went on to play and, and, and signed contracts for the first team and one of the players went on is now in the current Olympic team so they use this as a tool 
for moving um, for to seeing what players can play at an international type competition. We saw a shot there of Juan Sebastian Veron just going through the side of the team. That's the quality of the management that they've got at the Estudiantes de la Plata. He's looking down on the 19 tournament. Estudiantes will be favourites going into this match against Perth. But Perth are now rested and refreshed and will be looking to give it a good shot. It's the Friends International Cup. It is match day number three, Group A. It is Perth Glory versus Estudiantes. Perth Glory have got traditional all purple colours, one of few teams in the world who wear purple. You think of Fiorentine, there's a few teams in Austria, but it's certainly unique, Alistair. Yep, and uh, Nick Tano was the person who really started the Perth Glory and he wanted to be unique. He wanted to do something out of the box and they did a lot of marketing campaign and the marketeers of Australia said this is the kind of the name and the colours of what grabs attention. And there's also a Purple League Bradminton in Malaysia as well. There's one Sebastian Veron saying, I like the colour purple, let's change a studio his colours to purple. And that's one gentleman who definitely grabbed attention. I had the pleasure of playing in a friendly game with him the other, the, other, the other night and I managed to get a photo and it's one of the most popular photos I've ever posted on my Facebook. It just shows the, the, the esteem that that guy has held. Enough about you, Mr. Edwards. Let's talk about Estudiantes and the whole purpose of this tournament is, well, primarily to give Malaysian players the chance to play against international opposition. We saw Friends United they're starting well. Also, the referees get a chance to referee international competitions. Today, it's uh, uh, Hazim Karim Ghani who's in charge, all Malaysian officials. And you do have different styles. The Aussies will be a little bit more physical. The Argentine side's traditionally a little a bit more technical. Plus, with a little dog inside there as well, they can they can put it about themselves as well. People always talk about the technical ability of Argentinians and Brazilians, but I tell you, having played against them, having watched them so many times and coached against them, they can mix it up more absolutely absolutely really really well Perth Lorry two changes from the side that uh, suffered a 5-0 mauling at the hands of Friends United Riley Walland will come in on the right side of midfield and Ishmael Attack comes in on the right side of attack and he impressed it Ishmael when he came on yeah he did uh, that's one of the reasons why he's um, got a start spoke to John Gibson about him he's another young player and the interesting thing about it, the top three players there the number 17 Zimarano, Bukura and Attack are all the, the youngest players in the team 2001 2000 so they're giving three years advantage to the opposition. As for friends, uh, uh, sorry, as for Estudiantes, look out for a couple of people returning. Romagnoli is a, is a rugged centre back. Piaggio Comi will try to get forward from left back. Aquino will anchor the centre of midfield. Yep, and we've seen one team play yesterday, um, the last game or two days ago, and now a completely different set of players. And who knows? You, you just cannot tell at this age who are the best, and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be another couple of players here that are going to really shine out. Even on the bench for Estudiantes, who we think are their star players aren't on the bench at all. So it is the purple of Perth Glory against the red and white of Estudiantes de la Plata playing a Johor. Fabulous. Immediately we'll get uh, possession for Estudiantes. They'll just try to get themselves conditioned to their playing conditions. The pitch, um, well, it was baking hot and rock hard underneath and then a deluge on Monday night. We'll see how it's recovered. Really, a, a, a strange things for Perth Glory because they weren't used to playing in those kind of conditions. Spoke to John Gibson about that before as well, and he said he told the players that you're trying to scoop the ball up, etc. But they're young, they're exp inexperienced players, and they would have learned a lot from them. But these conditions, although they're stifling hot, the, the pitch conditions will make it a lot better for Perth Glory to try and play their style of play. Attack barged off the ball and immediately Sechas. This is out to Eigenhausen. Yeah, the time and space for Aquino. Aquino, a little give and go. This is Thomas Montiel. And it uh, bounces away, so the pitch has hardened up quite considerably over the last day and a half. Yep, and there's a little bit of a breeze coming through, a bit, bit overcast, so I think you can think in a lot, lot better conditions than there was uh, two days ago. Like a weather forecaster just at the moment. 
it does, it really impacts the, the way that the teams ha can play with is the, the competition because you want to play the style of football, you want to be able to mix it up, etc. But also the way that you play is often dictated by the weather conditions. Zimarino winning the uh, free kick for Perth. Millard and Robertson are the two rugged centre backs, and I think Ross Millard there took a bit of a knock from Facundo Brera. But what the interesting thing there was the offside was fantastic because you see the ball being played back to the glory, glory defender, and the whole um, Estudiantes team pushed forward as a unit, made it really nice and compact until you have a situation where they got the offside. Marinelli. He's part of last year's team, as well as Pierre Giacomi. Well, uh, just knocked it forward, this is Romagnoli. Montiel. Just behind Montiel and stepping in on his first start, Riley Warland. Seen dispossessed. There's a physical imbalance, isn't there? The Argentine team look at look like a team of under-19s and uh, looking uh, like a younger team. And what we have to do, because you're not going to be able to mix it with them physically because they are literally three years um, difference. And in this age group, it does make a lot of difference. But just getting back to that ball there from uh, from St. Pollard, when you get the ball, you've got to make sure you keep it. Riley Stevenson. He had a couple of nightmarish situations on Monday. He nearly had another one there as he was charged down by Barrera. Ready from the Estudiantes, they want to play the ball or on the ground, keep possession. So when Perth Glory do get the ball, they want to try and do likewise because otherwise they're going to be chasing shadows. Paddy, the one survivor from Monday night, striding forward. Shot from distance, coming from the eastern left foot of Maruosas. One of the, the beauties of these uh, these young players, particularly with the top top teams, they have the ability, just like adding them, of the ability to try and take on players, not try, but actually successful at doing it. And that's something that's really good about them, particularly about the Argentinians. You look at all the top strikers around the world; a lot of them are from that part of the world. Pulled out of the challenge, did Bruera? Tell you what, Sam Millard's going to find it uh, difficult against. Mountain, who is Brera? <laughs> Estudiantes, the semi finals of the under 19 competition in Argentina. The 24 top flight clubs and continually in the better competing teams. His attack. Better start from Perth Glory today. They set a very early goal against French United last game and that knocked the wings out of their sails a bit. And here's a throw in indeed. For the movement of Bakuru. I'm always fascinated with the, the whys of why the Argentinians and New Zealanders create so many good attacking players. Why is it in Malaysia and Australia we don't produce good attacking players? So that's a, not, not for this uh, you know, conversation here, but it's something to think about for youth development because they make so many outstanding attacking players. Adin does well. Crosses. Slides it across the Zosses. Barrera is strong and physical and gets the shot away. And speed of thought as well as physical prowess. From the Estudiantes have got at the moment until Eigenhausen is able just to put his foot on the ball, play the ball down the channels. Bukura will chase, but already it looks like this might be a long 90 minutes. 
one of the positive things there where they were nice and compact in front of the 18 yard box but like I just mentioned before about Pollard and here you go just the situation there where they're getting the ball and they're just knocking it forward and and hoping which you can't do against these type of teams and to be fair I know John Gibson speaking to him he's got a style of play that you want to play and he won't be happy with, with that to Warland. Pollard can't do anything with the resultant pass. Add in once again. Back to Romagnoli. Brera. Robertson very tight to him. Does well, does Scotty Robertson. It's going to be a battle to look out for. Brera again. Leach steps in. Pollard, all left foot into Bakuru. with a, a studs up challenge got the ball yep he won the, won the ball he'll be he won't be happy about that was, there was no malice in that whatsoever but it's interesting now for Bukuri because he now is knows he's in a, the game and these guys can tackle Miliano Gonzalez is first appearance in this tournament he's the backup goalkeeper the pattern of the Estudiante players, they're really making full utilisation of the whole field. They're nice and composed, they're playing the ball left and right, and you can see the Perth Glory players running left and running right. And the centre backs are comfortable on the ball, you see now he'll grab the ball and he'll push into the open space in front, Just trying to find that space in midfield. Orland has got a block in. Playing a lot deeper of Perth Glory this time. It's not 4-3-3, it's a 4-1-4-1. It's a Sehas, Osses. Glides past the challenge, Osses gets a good ball in. Brera's header. It's a silky play down the left there. Glides past people and knocks a great ball in there. Just coming a little bit away from, from the striker. But really, really good play. I think, like I say, the, the way that they go past people, and this time it was Osses breaking from the left middle, midfield position. Bit of an overlap. Alistair Edwards, the sports director of Joho Darrell Taxin. The man in the country box, this player in your own right as well, Alistair. Like I mentioned, I played a, a game of, of when we were playing, we thought we were semi decent, but when you play with a player like Baron, I'm a panel leader compared to the fantastic numbers. The, the skills, the awareness, the touch you know, we Aussies can run and we can do things quite well. We consider ourselves as semi decent players, but when you play against these teams or these players, I'm a leader. Running. This is Montiel. Adin's gone around the outside. Adin's cross. He's behind everybody. Warland did well. Eichenhausen is carrying it out to attack. He's taken the attack to Estudiantes and won a free kick. A little bit of play there from Riley Warland, but here you go. He just shows that these guys, they close you down very, very strong. And they give you no time on the ball. Purge your economy in this instance, they just they just literally want the ball to be played in a certain area and you just watch them pounce when, when they want when the ball goes into a certain area, they give no time in the danger zone. Like here. Sejas. Pereira. Coming there ahead of his man, but Sejas hasn't carried on his run. So Pollard can slow it down onto Murray. There's the pressing once again. Montiel. He's got Pereira. Eichenhausen can clear. That's one of the things that the learning moments from Perth Glory. Because you won't have much time in the ball. One bad touch gets capitalised. Then you're caught on the counter. And then. <laughs> yeah, 
ball out for a, for a corner, but the way things are going, this is, is going to be a bit of a long afternoon. It's going to be a lot of a lot of attacking play from Estandiantes, and Turf Claw will have to defend well. Five in the penalty area. Brewera just can't get there. Well defended in the end by Scotty Robertson, who's got his hands full dealing with the, the giant Brewera. Again, a lot of, you can see now, a bit more improved defending from, from Perth Glory as opposed to the other night against Friends. And they'll have to do that today. Because that was one of the biggest downfalls against uh, you know, Friends United. They dropped off too deep. Probably three goalkeeping errors. And you can't afford that at this level of football. Carrasco's corner. Turned into a half decent ball. An Ismail attack can come forward. Bukuru. Just shepherded by Akuna. Sorry, Aquino. That's their defensive midfield role. It's uh, up the number five who plays there. Even Gomez was the starter on match day one, but uh, Aquino's got that same role today. In these type of games where Perth Glory are setting back a bit, you'll see the two centre backs from Mr. Diandes, Remagnoli and Marinelli, these two on the ball, will get more possession than anyone. They're just opening the thing and then they'll drive into the spaces, looking for the openings in midfield of a cross field pass like this. Wagenhausen went for the ball, and if you go for that kind of ball, you can't afford to miss it. one thing about modern day footballers the goalkeepers need to be able to be good to their feet but also the center backs need to be good ball playing center backs yeah, strong challenge Pollard will pick it up Perth Glory in no hurry to go forward, just trying to wait for that the moment. Stepping into position though was Ramagnoli. And they look around the corner, starting position of Riley Stevenson, very good. Not on the edge of his penalty area. Leach to Eigenhausen. Both teams, the, the centre backs and the defensive midfield, are going to get a lot on the ball because it's stifling conditions out there. It's rather hot, so they're going to sit back, both teams, to a certain extent, and try and capitalise on an errant pass. Got a whole chunk of football coming for you on the Astro Networks. This week and next, we've got the under-19 competition here, the Friends International Cup, which runs through until Wednesday. Then on Thursday, Malaysia versus East Timor, the Asian Cup uh, qualifier. Two-legged affair taking place in Johor. This is Montiello for Estudiantes. Robertson, oh, sorry, um, Millard stuck out a right leg and prevented the cross coming in. Yeah, but there, Montiel. Again, we talk about being able to take on players, and here he is, the delivery in the box. He's trying to pick out someone, but the good defending from Perth Glory in the end. Ross Millard got himself in a good position. Romagnoli. Romagnoli again. Interesting that, what are we, 15, 16 minutes in, and that's the first time that they've really tried to float a ball in from a, a, a mid-pitch area. Yep, they're, just, they're trying diff different ways to break open, which has so far been a very, very good, compact, perth glory defence. 
And then we go into the pattern now of the two centre backs, having to make sure they get a lot of possession because you'll see just off the screen, the Estudiantes are waiting to pounce on any little errant pass. Just carrying on our Johor football theme, the second leg of that match against East Timor is on uh, Monday night, 10 p.m. Monday the 6th of June. And of course, we've got all 51 matches of Euro 2016. That's quite a few matches. You're gonna be good, you're gonna be busy. Getting sleepless. <laughs> You'll be watching him anyway. It's a good bit of play from Perth Glory. Good conditions. Robertson over the top, that's decent. Zimarino. Goalkeeper literally using every centimetre of his penalty area. Yeah, the modern day goalkeepers have to be like sweepers and patrol just, in, just behind their two centre backs. We can see the pattern settling into the game the two centre backs on both teams playing the ball across. The midfield is trying to remain compact. Still, the Andes often play a diagonal ball from one side of the field to the other, where Perth Glory are looking to play those, thread those balls, the killer pass. Carrasco. Help him in, help him in. Very tight from Eigenhausen. Carrasco has to come back out from Jacomi to Aiden. Montiel just clipped, free kick. But if you were John Gibson, the Perth Glory boss, I'd imagine you'd be pretty pleased with your team's, um, you've used the word several times, compactness. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no doubt they've learned a lot from the first game. Remember, they came into the competition late, it's their first um, taste of international football. They realised if they give um, top quality young players and around the world and time and space on the ball, they're going to be punished. And he would have done some video analysis. And like he said in his, his initial talk, is that it's up to them to try and learn from these moments. And um, they will. They're going to play their style of football, which they're trying to do. And it's all, it's all good. But the only thing is, is they're just lacking that little bit in that final third. And that's something that I, I'll, I'll, I'll go on, on about that a little bit later. First, they've got to defend. Carrasco's ball in. Dealt with by Pollard. Kuru didn't like the physicality. Attack, he's got quick feet. Trying to play the ball into Bakuru. Add in, strides forward. He's strong on the ball. Again, good to compact defending from Perth Glory. And now they look to Spread those ball in. Bakuru is just clipped by Romagnoli. Clever little turn from Abias Bakuru. Yeah, the youngster is going to be up against it. Against a really top notch centre pairing of Rabignoli and Marinelli. But that instance, a good little bit of skill. And it's really important because that gives a bit of breathing space for the midfielders and the defenders to set things up. And now they've got a situation where they're trying to penetrate a little bit further up the field. Robertson rather panicked when that ball came to him and got shot of it as soon as he could. So he needed to be a bit more composed and be patient. There's going to be a hard ask for Abias Bakuri to, get to chase after those long balls. He's the youngest player on the park. Leach has trodden on the ball, Carrasco. Stevenson went down early. He got lucky because Brera's shot came at him. Good little combination playing. Pollard just slipped over the ball. Great little spread to pass, but he's already down. Is Samson? Is Riley Stevenson? Or did he slip? But again, not your copy book goalkeeping. His confidence will have taken a big knock. With it from uh, two mistakes and I think that's good coaching to keep him in the team. Yeah, it is, like I say, John Gibson has a lot of experience with the younger players and he knows they're going to make mistakes and he's got that ethos, he learned by your mistakes and it's up to now to Riley to 
take the opportunity. The coach has shown a lot of confidence in him. And here we are with the diagonal pass across to the 1v1 situations. Sejas. Sejas on his right foot. Deflected for a corner kick for Estudiantes. It's yeah. their second corner, their third shot. And I think here lies the difference in both teams. The likes of Sejas, the ability of them to go and take on players in wide areas, come inside, go in the outside. And that's going to be the difference. Remember, this is a completely different team that played in the second game. And there were some really special attacking players in the team that played in the opening game of the tournament from Art from Estudiantes. Up to the bar and a chance for Sejas. It was a free header though. And a good save from Riley Stevenson, but a free header for centre-back Romagnoli. Again, a good delivery in the box. That was a fantastic header, and Riley Stevenson got a little flick onto it, hit the crossbar, so it was a good bit of confidence building for Riley. But again, can't afford to give those free headers in those situations. Of course, a bullet-like header, wasn't it? Well done. For Riley Stevenson, like I say, these these moments are learning moments, and you, if you can really develop from them, this will build character. Vera, Osses, just glides it wide. Stevenson wasn't too sure about where his left hand post was. Yeah, you can even see it now. You can see the combinations up there, the likes of Barrera and Sihas, and the, the ability to. Well, the willingness to shoot from from distance, but also to get into areas and getting the ball facing forward. Murray. Eventually, Stevenson has to go long. It's over Bakuru. Marinelli. To Romagnoli. Montiel. If these names aren't familiar, do just keep an eye on uh, how these players develop because they're under 19 and as you said, five got full time -time contracts with uh, Estudiantes. One will be playing in the Olympics from last season for Internacional, one of their players signed for Liverpool. I do promise you'll enjoy watching uh, Riza Karimi of Fringe United in the 8.30 match as well. Remember in 1997 when the Youth World Cup was here in Johor, Pablo Alma, he played at the Larkin Stadium for, for Argentina and quite a number of the decent players that came through the system from the national team from, from the uh, England team. But here you are, that, that header and a fine save from Riley Stevenson just shows that they, literally you've got five players around the ball from Perth Glory and no one making a challenge and you can't afford to do that. Here's the man whose header nearly gave Estudiantes the lead, Marinelli. Thomas Montial, Toba Brera finds Osas. Brera challenges. Ooh. Scotty Robinson's a bit fortunate there. Hands off Perth Glory, not too many protests from Estudiantes to be fair. The referee was right close by. That's brilliant footwork. Pushed wide, off says Pierre uh, Giacomi coming forward from left back. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good quick feet, and again, attacking the space and the willingness to have a shot from, from long range. And that's one of the good things about Perth Glory so far, but here is a tackle. But he had his off, had his eye on the ball. There was no intent, but it was a foul. It was indeed a foul. <laughs> they've, they've escaped one there of Perth. seen those given. In fact, it should have been given. <laughs> Upended. There's Robertson. Montiel. Brera. Quick feet once again. This is Osses. So he looks a good player on the ball. He's silky. Attacks the space well. He's looking for Sejas. Four natural left footers in this Estudiantes side. 
two of them combining. Into a third, Sejas. Giacomi. Brunera. Carrasco. Montiel. Murray's got a job to do on Montiel. Lovely cross from Montiel. And this is Sejas on the other side. Again, it's over Brunera. Probably a bit of wing play from Montiel and, and Sihas. Willingness to take players on. Get some really good crosses in. And they switch the ball from left to right. It's part of their strategy to try and open up the Perth Glory defence. Yeah, Giacomi, the left back, getting forward. Pass away. You've got to be, like I say, you mentioned before about Dom Kipson. How would he be feeling? And I think coming to the, the 30th minute mark, you can see off screen the, the team is nice and compact, very well organised. So good coaching going on, working hard for each other, and they're causing problems for Estudiantes. But you can just sense that the quality. From the likes of Montiel and Sihas and on the wings, they're going to be enough to open up the Perth Glory defence. That's a late challenge. The referee might pull that one back if there isn't an advantage. Bukor is still battling. And Restudiantes scored all four of their goals in the first half of their match against Suwon Blue and Samsung. because Suwon Samsung came in extremely well in the second half and made it very, very difficult. Although you might have sensed they might have took their foot off the pedal somewhat, but it was a lot better performance from Suwon in the second half. And again, this is a whole much better situation from, from Perth Glory. The ball's played in, the ambush on the, on the midfielder. It just shows they're quick learners. Aquino. Robertson just stretches. And Murray back to his goalkeeper. Velasco got it in front of Warland. Leach can only prevent the ball. At Osa's feet, he gets there onto Montiel. Leading in support. Leach clearance to Giacomi. Giacomi again. Both teams playing a very similar style of play, it's just that. The Studiantes are doing it more in the in their final, in their own half, the attacking half. The situation is when the ball goes forward for Perth Glory, you've got Abies Bakura often isolated, probably because, obviously because they're under a lot of pressure, and the way that the Estudiantes are setting themselves up, the defence, the block has to be really, really deep. So it's very hard for them to come and support. Okay, the Estudiantes now is putting a high, a bit higher press on now, trying to capitalise in these areas. Pollard's played the ball wide though to Murray. Murray needs movement ahead from Zimmerino. This part of Perth Glory is, is good. Playing out from the back. The first pass into the midfield is, is okay. That's my point. The fact the Malaysians and Australians, we can do all this and all fine. It's just when it gets to the final third. You need the quality. Most, well, in Australia for one, we, we haven't got any attack good, good strikers coming through. At JDT now, we're looking to try and get some good young strikers, but I'm telling you, they're as rare as hen's teeth. But if you look at Argentina and Brazil, there's so many attacking players coming out. They're as rare as what? <laughs> it's hen's teeth. <laughs> Ask again, as rare as what? <laughs> Kuru, well, he's 
put a challenge in there, and Zimmerino wants out muscles add in, which we haven't seen much of. So have you ever seen a, a hen's teeth? A hen's tooth? <laughs> oh, I haven't. Well, there you go. We're still, we're still searching in Australia for that rarity, that diamond up front. Mr. <laughs> Redwoods has got his Aussie cap on today. If you're sensing a little tribalism from Alice Redwoods, he was involved in the a lot of development work in Perth Glory and in Australian football generally. Zegenhausen's header, attack. Gehas. Even at this age, so comfortable on the ball, and you sense one or two of these players are, are probably good enough to make the step up to uh, the top level. Sure. And again, off screen, you can see the Perth Glory defence ever so well organised and compact, but just <laughs> are they going to be able to keep on doing that back and forth and putting those repeat actions in after they played? They didn't, didn't change their team from the opening game two days ago. Robertson loses out to Pierre Giacomi. Pierre Giacomi, pull back. Pereira not available to get on the end of it again, but the left back has done well. Yes, that's very well. The only thing so far from, if anything, from the Estudiantes is when they get in those areas, they've been failing to pick out the players when they get the ball into the box. Sekas. Laterally across the pitch. Good defending. They can start again through Aquino. He's covering for Pierre Giacomi. Herrera will challenge. Robertson will compete. And he's done well, Scotty Robertson, there. He's probably happier up against a big yeah. fella like Herrera than the um, pace of forwards he came up against in uh, Friends the other night. Yep. Because the, often the, the smaller ones, like we had a, oh, in the, the Friends and the, the likes of Aguero and those kind of things, have got a low centre of gravity. If you remember Maradona when he used to play, he can really turn very well and it makes it difficult for the likes of Scotty Robertson, who are, who are nice and tall. But you've got to be pleased with the way that Perth Glory has really bounced back from the mauling against Friends United. They haven't dropped their heads. Its first appearance in what is the fourth holding of the International Cup. In previous years, it's been at under 15 and under 16 level. Last year, it was held in two countries, Indonesia and Malaysia, in a very ambitious 16-team format. Considering the Euros is only just going to 24 teams, that 16-team format was uh, very ambitious. Back down to eight. Oh, Warland will pick up a yellow card for that. It's very cynical for one so young. Riley is one of the, the guys that came in in the first game. They had five yellow cards in the first game, did Perth. And you can just sense that Perth are defending deeper and deeper. Brera. First time he's got ahead of Robertson. There you go. Another, another great ball in. Cutting inside. The right foot coming in and... Pereira gets in front of Robinson that time. And the ball just just skims over the, the bar. Would have had Ronnie Stevenson beaten. Flag is up for offside. Referee hasn't seen it yet. Sekas is carrying on. What a fine challenge by Scotty Robinson anyway. Now the attention is being drawn by the referee, even by our supposedly neutral commentator, Mr. <laughs> <Alistair> Edwards. <laughs> I, did, I can just see that yellow flag up in the air, and I, you know, the, it was a. Um, I think, but the, on, a, on a serious note, though, the fact is that the, it was offside, and now we've got a player who's um, who's injured. And that, that quite often happens. The player's now going for a bit of a, a drink break. Thoroughly deserved. Playing full 45 minutes, 36 minutes gone, and for Perth Glory, 
Yep, it's a, a vast improvement on performance. Not attitude, because the attitude was good against uh, um, Friends United, but individual mistakes have been eliminated as well. Yep. And for what we spoke about on the broadcast two days ago was they played the conditions poorly. They tried to play this brand of football when the pitch was sodden. And they really couldn't pass more than five metres with the ball stopping in the rain. Where friends didn't do that at the beginning and the man on screen is great to see they're on here at these tournaments. It just shows you how important, how much uh, emphasis they put on these type of tournaments to have the likes of him here and speaking to them before the game, they really take these, this, this tournament very, very seriously because this is the last chance really for those players here to, to really um, impress to see if they can get their contracts within the um, first team program. Like I said, six players from the first from, from last tournament made the first team. That's a good point you make there because uh, we think it's 18, 19 years of old playing football, but you're playing for contracts year after year, year after year. You're playing for your futures. There's no guaranteed uh, pension. Not everybody is a Messi. Yes. You find that most of the players that come through in the top level, particularly the. Uh, Maradona's and uh, the Verons, etc. Where they come from, they were, and I was a bit similar. Where you've got, um, you know, the, you're not exactly flush with money, and so if you've got a contract potential, you fight tooth and nail and do anything you can to make sure that you keep involved in football because the riches and the, the lifestyle is a lot better than what you would would get. Still goalless. It's an overcast as well. The stultifying heat of Monday isn't here today. Zagenhausen finds Ishmael attack. Going to Estudiantes. Possessional stats 62% for Estudiantes. They've had four corners, seven shots. Only one on target though. Perth Glory have had to make 13 clearances from crosses into their own penalty area. So all the pressure is from the team in red and white as Montiel is held up by Cam Murray. Adding goes around the outside. Montiel carries on. Montiel. But again, a great bit of skill there from, from Montiel. He was helped by the overlapping run from Adding there. And he comes inside and might not have a shot from there, but it just shows you the confidence on the ball and the wing play of Montiel and the likes of Seos on the other side. But great forward run there from the overlapping Adin. Really brought the, the fullback in Cam Murray with him. Allowed Montiel to come inside. Good little performance when he came on in this in the against friends. He's one of the players that looks a bit lively who can who can do things and willing to take on players. And they have the ability to do so. Carrasco. He was looking for Sejas to stay wide, but Sejas had come inside. Still feeling his shoulder is uh, Juan Sejas. He uh, had a tumble and tackled by Scotty Robertson. Sam Leach playing a lot deeper today as well. Bukuru. Well played by Carrasco. To Montiel. Carrasco again. Asks Adin to get forward. Adin obliges. He's got Brurera in the middle. Kicked off. And Millard. Corner off Robertson. Again, you can just sense that. They're really starting to put a lot of pressure on the Perth Glory defence. You mentioned the 67% uh, possession, but a lot of that is in the, the first, the, the, the attacking half of Perth Glory. And the difference between both teams that we can see clear as day at the moment is that when Estudianos are, are, are attacking, they've got four or five players in the front third very, very quickly, whereas Perth Glory have often isolated and they've only got at the most two. Velasco's cross is too far beyond the far post. And despite all the pressure, despite 
now six corners. Eight shots, it's no goals. Scotty, yep. last one, go John Gibson from the side sideline side saying last five. You want to go in there with a clean sheet. Worked ever so hard defensively in this first half to, to keep it a clean sheet. And it'll be a killer if they concede a goal going in. But on, on the flip side to that, Steve Antes would, would think that they deserve a goal. go all out to get that goal before the, the half-time break. You did well there, you thought of Estudiantes. <laughs> Who? <laughs> yeah, Jacomi. I do understand it's uh, a very young Perth Glory team up there. I just love, love watching the, 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 the switch play from Estudiantes. The people that are calm on the ball, the wing play. Of the, this. Secas, Jan Secas, pushed away. And Montiel couldn't slice it in. And there you go, we just talked about the, the great wing play and Sihas coming in here. And again, a really top save from Riley Stevenson there, knocks it out. And then couldn't keep it under the bar. But that's the difference at the moment is the, the ability of the players in the, front, in the final third. The likes of Sihas there, Montiel on the right. Barrera was having a good battle with Scotty Robertson. Stevenson's made a couple of very decent saves yes. in this first half. He made a couple of outstanding saves as well as the errors in the match against Friends. You see the, the movement of Estudiantes, the patience they have on the ball. They've got a clear pattern of play where they try and make sure that they get Perth Glory moving back left and right, tie them out, and then they look to get the, the diagonal to one of their wingers and Sihas and Montiel. They tried it just now for Harding going forward. Zimarino's clearance gives Perth the chance to move the whole back four and midfield up 40 metres. Here's the earlier effort from Sekas. Yeah, coming inside, look, he just throws a little dummy. And that was a really top take from Riley Stevenson. And again, he just wrong foots him and that was curling around. And Riley Stevenson knocked the ball away from the danger area. But Montiel couldn't direct it on, on target. Be interesting to see if uh, Seahouse comes back in the second half. He's been holding his shoulder. Good to watch these players. He touched one header onto the bar earlier on from Marinelli. Now he's pushed that one aside from Juan Seahouse. 60 seconds or so for Perth Glory to escape with a, a clean sheet in the first 45 minutes. Add in. Start to Zimarino. Leach. That's good from Murray. Oh, he's then decapitated by a challenge from Matias Aquino and Aquino picks up a yellow card. Yeah. The only thing that they try and do, they just try and make sure they nullify any attacking impetus. And there you go, Matias Aquino. You go, you're not going to do that anymore. And that typifies their, their approach. They're not only actually fantastic on the ball with their fighters, they can really put in a, a stiff tackle. And that just killed, killed the potential counter attack. Professional foul, as, as some would say. Looking assassin, if ever there was one. Murray's ball. Cleared by Montiel. And as far as Leach, he's got Murray available. Second chance. He's got Robertson at the far post if he can get the cross in. Attack. Just taken away from him by Pierre Giacomo. No, Stiviando is having to show their defensive prowess late in the, in the first half. Again, good good cross coming in at was and I uh, just couldn't get the end of it. Eigenhausen. Warland breaks the Pollard. Goes down by Marinelli. Add in onto Osses. 
Pollard slides in with a crunching tackle, which typifies Perth Laurie's first 45 minute efforts. Yep. They've been on the back foot for most of the occasion, but the attitude has been excellent. They've restricted Estudiantes to just a couple of shots, and uh, you'll be happy with the attempts of Perth Laurie to make themselves more difficult to beat. Yeah, because the, the first game and the, the men on screen, Riley Stevenson, will, will be very happy with his performance. And I think it's, it's good for the tournament, actually, because Perth Glory didn't show themselves very well in the first game against Friends, and now they've, they've at least put on a good good show in the defensive aspects of um, coming in at half-time 0-0. Goal cool, at half-time. We've got highlights after a short break. Friends International Cup 2016. Friends International Cup coming to you from Pase Gudang in Johor. It is Perth Glory nil, Estudiantes nil in the match day number two in Group A. And Perth Glory, despite fielding a very young team, have done really well to hold uh, Estudiantes at bay. Estudiantes have made a lot of changes on the side that put four goals past Suan Samsung in match day one. Uh, Bruera's come in as a main striker, and uh, Alistair Edwards, although they've had a lot of the ball, they haven't created great opportunities. No, they've, they've, they've pressed high and they've done these, these kind of situations where they've got players that can run up play ball and get, get some decent crosses in. And they've fluffed a few chances like that, but they've had a lot of good, good opportunities there, but it's a lot better defending from first story as, than the other game. The situation here is they every little mistake that they make get capitalised, and the only thing is, is how long can they be as resilient in a defensive unit after the same team played in the first game and now the heat of the first half? The highlights will show it's all Estudiantes, this time Montiel coming down the right-hand side. And his cross is uh, cleared initially at the front post by Millard. And defensively, you've used the word compact several times. No, more than several, about ten times. Per yeah, look at all the players around the ball. This is a good bit of defending there from Scotty Robertson. He, he read the play, read the patterns extremely well. But the wing play out outside and the left-hand side, and those little passes in there. But Riley Stevenson there was really down too early. And we mentioned that in the, in the broadcast. But again, those little areas, they've had some chances, but they haven't met, managed to get some venom on the shots just yet. Riley Stevenson had a bit of a nightmare in match day one, but here he makes an excellent save to carry that Marinelli header onto the crossbar. And that's midway through the half, and you're beginning to worry for Perth if they were con to concede then. And uh, Robertson's saved the day. Yep, you can talk about two things there. A great save from um, Riley Stevenson, but the poor defending from Perth Glory, giving Marinelli a free header just inside, just outside the 18-yard box, I mean the, the six-yard box. And if it wasn't for the little, little touch from Riley Stevenson, that would have been 1-0. Okay. That was as close as the Studiantes would come, but they did create one or two chances. Bosses firing one just wide again, Stevenson. Not sure of his positionings there, I don't think. Yeah, but the thing is, one good thing about the Perth Glory defending is they're, many, they're, they're forcing a lot of shots from outside the box, and again, um, it just whizzled past the post, and Riley Stevenson a little bit. You know, one chance that uh, the big man Bruera had to get the better of Scotty Robertson, made once again by Sekas. Yeah, Sekas has been probably the, the form player from the Estudiantes in the first half. Got in front of um, Scotty Robertson this time was Bruera, and um, they've, they've, they've defended well. But here he is again. He's very, very good on the ball. You see Huss and here cuts inside, little dummy. A good little save from Scotty Stevenson, and this time Montiel couldn't get his head leg over the ball. Just uh, but, Injured player not, um, in the second half, not sure if he'll come back up, but C has been great. Great save from Riley there, but you'll see that um, C has has been holding his shoulder. Will he be able to perform some of this stuff in the second half? We'll, we'll soon find out. Alistair Edwards, the sporting director of JDT, is uh, 
man with the analysis, but you look at this Estudiantes, two shots uh, on target, eight off target, nothing in terms of shots for Perth Glory, no corners, five corners for Estudiantes. It is very much one-way traffic. It's all about defence for Perth. Yep, that just tells, uh, tells the story. Defended extremely well, but they've, they've done that okay, but they've really struggled in the final third. But the percentage has been off, off in, in, the, in the front third of um, Perth Glory's defensive um, area. That's the statistic that was the International Cup coming to you from Pasegudang in Johor. It's the fourth edition of this age tournament. The first time, though, it's been at under 19 level. And uh, Inter, sorry, um, Estudiantes de la Plata were runners up last year. And they're struggling here against Perth Glory. It's goalless at half time. Alistair Edwards used to be involved with the Perth Club, now involved at uh, JDT as a sporting director. Let's talk about Estudiantes. They made 10 changes from the side that um, easily won their first game for now. Is it a gamble? I asked you before, and you said, no, they've got enough, enough quality. Would you still stick by that? Well, they would have watched the first game from Perth Glory. I said that Perth Glory would be a lot better in the second game, and it is a gamble because they have to get a result today, and they've left out their top, uh, well, the ones we saw, the top three players not even on the team list. So if they don't get a result and don't get it draws the games, it makes it more difficult for them in the, in the final game. Certainly does. We heard some peals of thunder. There's some lightning in the distance. The clouds are dark and looking threatening. We have had one torrential down for a, a couple of days ago and rain is threatened for later on today. So the quagmire that we had on Monday may well resume later on today. But for now, the condition's pretty good. The pitch's held up well. Your Japanese creator's doing his job. It's very, very good, actually. But there's a lot of, lot of football here. After this tournament, there's a break in the league, so that will be able to repair itself. But it's been a, a decent game, I think. You can see by the statistics, Perth Glory have defended well, and um, the Standiandes have really attacked in the, the world, but they've just been missing that final bit of sharpness in front of a goal. Which, and one thing interesting for me is that we'll see how Perth Glory, can they maintain the same tenacity of defending and the short, sharp things they're doing particularly when most of the team has played a game two days uh, two days ago and they've made no changes, and this Estudiantes team is all fresh. Estudiantes is about to make a half-time change. Uh, we were thinking that there was an injury. And um, the man who's going to come on is Matias Acuna, who will play on the right-hand side, and the man he will replace will be Juan Sejas, who was injured himself in a, in a tackle after the whistle had gone for an offside against him, ironically. Yep. Yep, and then, like we, we, we mentioned that in the, in the first half, we were wondering if he would come on, but he uh, was, was the standout player for me in the first half alongside Montiel. But now they've given another youngster a chance to, to show his stuff. Ahamada Akuna. Played in the first game on the right-hand side. This time he's going to start on the left. He played on the left in the second half as the Estudiantes changed things around. So a little bit of pressure on the Argentine team. They are expected to win this one. Brurera this is out to Algenhausen. Montiel goes past Murray. Still Montiel. He's got a corner. 
first involvement for the substitute. Tries to get onto his right foot, Akuna. Then hits the byline. And Stevenson saves the resulting cross. Good piece of keeping from, again, from Stevenson. But this time, Akumara comes in and does some stuff on the left-hand side. Some really good wing play. And that was Montiel and Ahumada. And obviously, the, the way that the Estudiantes play, they're heavily reliant on their wing players, particularly in the first half that we've seen so far. But the, the defence of Perth Glory have held on very well so far. Adding. Once again, Akuna Aumada. Oh, oh, to clear by Scotty Robertson. Quick to pull his defenders out. Defending a line, what, 25 yards away from goal. As Romagnoli comes forward. Pollard loses out to Brera. Brera's shot. Again, he beats Pollard. No free kick, Brera. Smacks the floor in frustration. He wanted a free kick there, did the big striker. Romagnoli. Yeah, Perth have really come into this game. There's particularly, you can see it more in the second half. They're even defending a lot more compact and a lot more deeper. So they're saying, oh, come on, it's to the end. It shows what you can do, see if you can break us down. Marinelli looks for Barrera. Robertson is helped out by Sam Leach. Sorry, Jack Leach. Cleared rather desperately by Abias Bakuru. Yeah, and that's three times in a row. When they've won the ball back for a three, they've just knocked it for, for, forward aimlessly. Clear intent just to make sure that they try and defend, particularly in the opening stage of the second half. Osses, Carrasco, Osses, Bakuru. Losing out. Kino, Akuna. Carrasco's ball in. Just drifts beyond the far post, and it has been all Estudiantes for the three minutes we've been playing this second half. Yep, and the wing player and the crosses are coming in thick and fast. But you must say that the first three defence have managed to, you know, they've got some tall timber back there. The likes of Robertson and Millard, they're handling things relatively well. Good challenge now for Tommy Eagle Hasten and, and Cam, Cam Murray because they know they're going to be up against it. That'll be discussed at half time because they really need to be defending well because the, the star players for Estudiante for, for this second game is Montiel and Wasihas. Now Almada has come on the first couple of minutes and you can see he's a bit special. There are no passes coming yet. Pollard belted forward. Wanted an attack to chase it. Marinelli. Murray saw the challenge and Pollard reacts quickest. Direct the pass. And that's again, there's six times they've won the ball in the midfield area, defensive area, and just pumped it forward. So they they know they're, they're up against it. But the interesting John Gibson on the sideline is always vocal and giving instruction to his players. And, but the first whole first half, the Estudiantes coach was sitting down nice and calm and relaxed. But now he's on the top sidelines and he's now barking instructions. So there may be a bit of tension creeping into the game from their perspective. Ruera. Bosses caught by Pollard. Be a free kick to Estudiantes. Pollard limps away. A bit of a dangerous area. Oof. Nice 50-50. Again, no malice intended from there, but he's given away a free kick in the dangerous areas. We've seen some many wonder goals from the South Americans from these distances. We saw one in the first game from Gabriel Metz. 
Wonder free kick in the game that was abandoned. It was the Internacional versus Besiktas game. That one wasn't, but it still nearly found its way through. The flag was up for offside, and that was strange. What? The striking foot of Akuna just must have given way as he struck it. And you see a little, little bit of ball watching there from Cliff Glory and you see Scotty Robertson pointing to the, the linesman who came to the rescue. Just finding it so difficult to hold on to the ball as Osses comes forward. Akuna. Aquino. Osses the target, Eigenhausen stretches. Osses again. Estudiantes throw. We have a, a chance, I'll try to give you the names just to give you a chance to familiarize yourself with the names and the numbers. There's Adin. Osas once again. He's got Akuna available. Three in the penalty area. Robertson must be his uh, umpteen clearance. That's why it's ever so crucial for the positioning of the likes of Tommy Egelhaisen and Cam Murray because those diagonal balls they can't penetrate. In, this, in the central areas, is this the Stidianto? So they're trying to make sure they spread the ball left and right and try and make the defensive area a lot, a lot wider and try and get the ball to their wide players for 1v1. So Estudiantes, they've got Gonzalez in goal, a back four of Adin, Romagnoli, Marinelli and Pierre Giacomi, who's on the ball at left back. Aquino, the base man in midfield with Carrasco and Osses pushing forward. Up front, they've got Facundo Bruera as the main target man, the bustling number nine. Wide right is Thomas Montiel, wide left is uh, Akuna Ahumada. So definitely, Estudiantes are uh, bossing the game in terms of possession. Half chances created, but then some would argue that and I'm sure John Gibson will argue. But from a defensive point of view, they will think that they're in control because they're making a lot of uh, good decisions and forcing shots from outside, forcing the ball out wide. Akuna takes on Agenhausen once again. Scotty Robertson's big right boot. That's the danger. Again, reading the patterns, those two centre backs in Robertson and Millard. The one thing about the Ahamada, he's there's a trend in the first half. The final pass coming in after they've beaten their wide player hasn't been the best from the Estudiantes, and it's following on the second half. Eichenhauser's clearance and. Adin struck that one very hard, did the right back. And it shows that the right back's pushing, pushing on, making sure they win all the second balls coming out. And he fenced himself from out, out there, but just skewed off his right foot, just to the right of the post. Referee though has played an advantage for Montiel. And Montiel, this time he's cleared by Ross Millard. There was a bit of a tired looking de defending there from Cam Murray. It was, the ball was played through, and but he recovered extremely well, did Cam. Good tackling to here, and again, Ross Millard back to save the day. Geronimo Carrasco to take the corner kick. Five in the penalty area. Doesn't beat the front man. Belted clear by Bakuru, but he was the furthest Perth player forward. Surely they can't just keep inviting this pressure, Alistair. No, it's, the, it's one of those things where the 
defensively and you can talk about the compactness and everything and the good wing play from here. Montiel, delivery again is not the greatest. But in terms of defending and the, the compactness of Perth Glory, you can't argue with it, but you can argue with the fact that it's probably counted eight times now that, we, that Perth Glory have won the ball and they just wanted to get rid of it and then start again. So it's like a, a training drill for defensive shape at the moment. 90 minute training drill. 11 shots to nil, seven corners to nil. Not many fouls though, just the 12 in total. As Marinelli finds Bruera. Kuna Ahamada. Bruera. Riley. Stevenson taking no chances there. Again, a good little bit of wing play. This time a better ball into the box. Got the Pereira got the, the, the header on target, but Ronnie Stevenson just managed to knock it over the bar. Stevenson does in just enough. Took out one of his own players as well, which for the goalkeeper isn't necessarily a bad thing. Carrasco, well, he was looking to play on. The referee uh, Good has seen it's a head wound, so yeah. the trainer will come on. And that's where the referee's got the discretion. They, they could have kept the ball playing, but the referee saw it was a, a head clash and rightly so stopped the game. But that was a, actually a very, very strong bit of, bit of goalkeeping from Riley Stevenson, attacking the ball, and he went through. Ross Millard, who's Ross Millard. Was wondering what day it is. Mm. He's got his eyes closed. You don't like to see these, these, these things. Scotty is looking worriedly over towards the bench. Players, in the meantime, taking the opportunity to take on some liquids. Here he is, Riley Stevenson. He wasn't doing this on match day one. See here, he's come in there and it's actually, the ball's actually hit. Ross Miller's in the back of the back of the head and also the, the, the attention he got from Riley Stevenson is it's a bit painful. But they've got the stretcher coming on. A chance for the, the players to get a bit of um, a bit fluid in them. Reassess situation after this 10 or so minutes gone in the second half. Well, the signs are that he's not going to be able to continue. And the uh, substitution is being prepared by Perth Glory. Cameron McLean has just been summoned. They're moving uh, Millard onto a stretcher just at the moment. a close eye on that in the meantime the game will get underway the substitution isn't being made just as yet We're going to wait for a final analysis and the referee has recommenced with a drop ball which Perth have given back to Estudiantes so temporarily down to 10 men it looks like a Riley Warland is going to just slot in at a sweeper alongside Scotty Robertson Marinelli, Adin, Montiel, Marinelli, Never from Carrasco, Giacomi, Robertson, well done by Scotty Robertson and the foul won by Adam Zimarino. with Ross Millard off the field, the cross comes in and Scotty Robertson and Riley Stevenson having to do the, the work here. But again, that header on target, again, just no, no, no risk from Riley Stevenson then, just knocks it away from the danger area. When he was supreme confidence, he probably would have caught it. Not taking any risks. Here's Aquino. Montiel, closed down by Cam Murray. Heavily played, add in. 
Lovely ball inside. Montiel. It's gone right across the face of the goal and can't be turned home by Carrasco. They want to get this substitution done quickly because Ross Millard and Scorosa were fantastic in their situation where Ross would have been here to clear the day. But there was, luckily for Perth Glory, there was no one really attacking the ball going through there, but some great bit of play there again from Montiel. Fantastic ball across the box and someone just needed to be coming to knock it in. But they've managed to get the substitution. It's going to be a bit of a loss, actually a major loss for having Ross Millard off the park now. McLean, it is who's come on in midfield, and that will mean uh, Riley Warland will continue as centre back. Ken yeah. McLean played the first game in midfield and was replaced by Riley Warland. Yeah, a good chance for Riley Warland now. He's got the opportunity in midfield, and now he's playing as a, a centre back. There he is, to attack, tries to be fancy. Still, every statistic is in Estudiante's favour, apart from the all important one, top left of your screen. The question is, how long can Perth Glory hold on? One can they? The good thing you can see off screen is uh, Ross Millard is walking off, although he's a bit blurry. He's, he's up and about, so that's a good sign. Murray. He's lost out to Montiel. Chance for Carrasco. Slides it into the corner. It's taken just over an hour, but Estudiantes have got themselves the lead. And it's courtesy Geronimo Carrasco. You can see a tangible relief on the bench, but again, the dropping off, and that was a great finish there from Carrasco. He, he just didn't smack the ball, he, he just curled it around Riley Stevenson with a left peg. Just couldn't get there, bounced a little bit under Riley Stevenson there. But again, the shot was from distance, and then finally managed to Prize open this very, very well dribbled first story defence. What we must say is a very deserved lead. It is indeed a deserved lead, and there's a change also for Perth. Ignacio Dominguez has come on. Placing Adam Zamarino. This is Martial Scott Robertson providing a bit of muscle for Perth. It was good resistance for an hour from Perth. You wonder if our first goal, though, might open the floodgates. Yeah, it usually does. Uh, the heads of the, the team that conceded, they've, they've just defended ever so well, and now they've got to look at how do we now get back into the game? Because there hasn't been much to shout about or even to talk about um, going forward from Perth Glory. And will they change the way they're playing? Because the nil-nil result would have been fantastic for for Perth Glory against a very, very good Estendiades team. Would you change if you were coach, if you were John Gibson? Um, <laughs> yeah, I would, because it's all about making sure that we give the players an opportunity to, to have a go. And now they've tried to keep a nice and compact situation. We'll get back in the with Montiel here. Great ball in. And 2-0. That's touched in by Barrera. Two goals in two minutes for Estudiantes. And big Facundo Barrera has got his first goal of Friends International 2016. You are a prophet, we just talked about. Do you think the, the floodgates are going to open? And again, the situation here, great bit of wing play again from Montiel, and this time a nice little touch there from Barrero, just past the keeper, and that is a great little finish. A really difficult skill, that, just not, not getting the ball, helping it on his way. And there you go. Resilient for so much long in the, so long in the game, and now they've conceded two quick goals. Getting back to what the other question before is, would I change it? Yes, I would, because you've got to have the ability of to try and change in different situations of the game. Nilne would have been a fantastic result. They defend extremely well, but now let's see if we can go to the next phase and show what Perth Glory can do in an attacking sense, which could cause problems and open the floodgates, like you mentioned. Certainly 
could, and I dare say that would, would happen. Perfect weight, don't you go fly yet? There is Brera, he's worked hard. He's in Montiel, just can't stretch. There's another 25 minutes to play. You just mentioned about the, the fact that Ross Millard is out and at the back there with Scott Robertson. And again, here's the first goal. Just giving the players, it's too like a little bit too much time outside the box and top players like that can just pass the ball into the back of the net, which happened just there. And, you know, you look at it again from Riley Stevenson, could he have got a hand on it? It's debatable, but again, it's a big relief. You can see the, the relief from the bench, they all jumped off. That was an important goal for them. You could ask yourself, would they have been able to keep it 0-0 with Ross Millard on the field? But you could sense it was going to happen anyway. You could sense that the momentum was building, the pressure was building, and they couldn't really sustain that defensive block. Takes all the pressure off Estudiantes now. Up until the hour. They were still playing well, they were still creating chances, but you can sense a little bit of an unease might just settle in. Instead, Carrasco can find Acuna. What a good message from the, the coaching staff, the, the president of Iran and the coaching staff to give a completely different team a chance to, to prove themselves, even when the games, the tournament's still wide open. It just shows you a lot of faith and a lot of confidence in the development of players. I'm sure it's well, well received by the the studio players. To be fair, Ossess and Carrasco are, are pretty decent players to come in. Exactly. Montiel hasn't done too badly. Brera's been a very useful target man up front. But it's still, a, still an educated risk because you can literally feel and see when they scored the goal, they all jumped off the bench because they knew that how important it was to get a goal. It's Akuna. Jacomi. It's interesting, it gives the coach uh, a dilemma possibly for the third game against Friends United on Friday, 8.30. Yeah, there's been some good performance. I think there's also some great performance in the first game as well. Change for Estudiantes, Damien Adin. I think he's the man who's coming off. Here we have the, the Montiel, the great ball into the box there, and that is a really good finish from, from Barrera. Just curls it around, just just in front of the keeper. The keeper's hesitant; he can't come out because he, if he does, he's going to get caught in no man's land. That's a perfect little ball into Montiel. Manuel Souza who scored one, and he's a really creative player. He's a number ten. Who wears number ten? If you're John Gibson, you, you'd want to make sure that you don't concede again. You've lost the first game 5 0, and that's the kind of thing that goes through coaches' minds. They do, you can talk about the team's younger, you can talk about the given three years, these guys have played so many international tournaments as opposed to none, but at the end of the day, when you go back home, people will just see the scoreline and go, How can we lost 3 0? I feel your pain. Yeah, yeah, this, this is true. <laughs> Ball against uh, yeah, Giacomo, who's shifted to right back to accommodate Souza. That means Carrasco's moved to left back. It, is, it just shows you the, the development of the, in Argentina because you've got two separate teams playing exactly the same well, same way. It's really good to see. They're all composed on the ball. They've, they've all got players that can take. They've got players in the wide areas who can take players on. The centre back pairing is nice and solid. They value possession. So there's a purpose of what they do. Here's Carrasco, score of the first goal. Reminder: Friday night, 8:30, 8:45 kickoff. We have got Estudiantes versus Fringe United. Have got an international lineup with some very good local talent as well. That's one of the reasons that I'm sure they see the end. They wanted to make sure their players were as fresh, which friends were very good against Perth Glory in the first game. Some really top players. 
Really looking forward to that game. Twenty minutes to play later on tonight. Friends have got their second match against Suwon Samsung Blue Wings of Korea. Suwon four 0 losers to Estudiantes on Monday. Match day number one. Estudiantes have won that, that second ball coming out. They're always working in unison. You can see now all the angles, the, the constant movement, the wide players, and on the screen, the left-hand side, staying wide, comes on the ball. Combinations have been a great bit of defending there. Good slight tackle from Millard. I'm oh, sorry, and Sam Pollard. Carrasco. I can't remember too many touches from Emiliano Gonzalez in the second half. That no. could be his first. Yes, they, they, they've actually really bossed the game, particularly in the second half. I think first three we were hoping that they could sustain it and make sure that they kept the clean sheet, and that would have been a, a decent performance in terms of defensive anyway for Perth Glory. But now they've got a dilemma. Is what they want to try and do? They want to try and get on the score sheet for their first goal of the tournament, or they just want to try and have a bit of damage control. Dominguez loses out to Clasco. You dare say if they do open up and they are expansive and they, they really have a go at this Estudiantes team, I think they're going to get exposed somewhat. At the moment, the side, formation side, looks the same. It's a 4 5 1 with just Bukuru even pretending to push forward. I think Estudiantes have plenty of possession in their half and as soon as they come into at Glory's half, that's when they make their defensive moves. And the, the worrying thing for Perth Glory is that every single player from Mustad Yandes will, will not be taking their foot off, foot off the pedal because they want to impress. They've only, this is their first game of the tournament. They want to make sure they're playing on Friday night. Romagnoli. Pierre Giacomi. Might still break to Leon Pierre Giacomi. He can prove he can play left back or right back with versatility. See it again, they're winning the ball back for a few. The only players have got around the ball to play the combinations. Strong on the ball. Montiel. Corner kick off Cam Murray. 17 minutes for Perth to hang on. There's bound to be some tired legs in there as well. Second game in, in two days. And they've really been up against it defensively. But we must say that defensively in the first game against friends, they were poor. In fact, very poor. But today was a marked improvement defensively. Corner number eight for the Estudiantes. Belted clear by Pollard. Two tired legs, not rushing out as effectively as they did earlier on. Carrasco. Mosses. Souza is a genuine playmaker. They really are playing well, aren't they? Totally controlling the game. It's a city Perth. The Perth Glory defence are way back, just making sure that they're nice and compact to try and make sure they, there's no spaces. Pollard. Pollard on the ball has had some good moments. Some good defending, some good tackles, intercepts and passes going forward. But the only thing missing from the Perth Glory performance is the, when, they, when, they, when they've got the ball, because the other part you can. Give it a tick. And as opposed to Estudiantes, when they get the ball into these areas now, it usually goes to the to the feet, and they've got players, three or four players, often five, that are doing the the attacking. As opposed to Glory, where you've literally got Abias Bakura, the lone ranger up front. They won a free kick though, have Perth, the team in purple. The 
you're right to say they are the most isolated professional football club in the world. Attack loses out. Guerra, score of the second. The challenge from Riley Warland. Kino defends, throw in Perth. And one of the young players, Riley Warland, coming in. Great experience for him. And the change will be for Estudiantes. And it's Franco Civetti who has come off for Thomas Montiel. Civetti is a holding midfielder. Estudiantes will know they've got tougher tasks ahead. Friends United on Friday then. Victory here will guarantee them a place in the semi-finals. The semi-finals will also be at this same Pasigudang venue next Monday. The winners of Group A, this group, play the runners-up of Group B, which is uh, mired in a little bit of a controversy after the match between Internacional and Besiktas was abandoned after 25 minutes when Besiktas decided not to carry on playing. There'll be more news on that and a meeting about that later on tonight. The other game, Kashima Antlers nil, Chombury nil. A match of astonishing goal mouth incidents and no goals somehow. So both of those are still in the uh, reckoning. Estudiantes now toying with Perth Glory. It's about the 23rd pass in a row. Trying to draw the Perth Glory players out to do this kind of ball. Akuna. Lovely ball from Akuna and Pereira. It's blocked off by Scott Robertson, who's dealt well with the brawny Pereira. Klein helps it on, but only to Carrasco. It's a recurrent theme. They win the ball back, and like we said before, it's, it's much like a... Souza. His first touch, although he was offside, cushioned it on the chest, turned away. Do we have players like that in Malaysia? We do. We actually got some very, very good, good, skillful young players uh, coming through. They're, they're more in the, the holding midfield type areas and the, um, the wide type areas. But what we're missing is the number tens like that and uh, the strikers. Yeah. It's something that's an, it's another topic. It's, a, it's a, for me. I've got my opinions on it about the, the fact that what, what do we do in youth development and why are these players having players like that? There's so many. This is a club team. And you can see it with quality. Where uh, Messi, Badu Stupta previously, all these absolutely top class players being churned out year after year after year. Hagenhausen, Robertson. He's had a good game, this is Scotty Robertson. Really good. Orland, Murray. Leach. Need to do. They just, just need to keep the ball. They just practice maintaining possession, backing themselves. Jack Leach has worked very hard. Not mentioned him much in commentary because he's not been on the ball much. But he's put in a vast amount of work just to try to stem the tide. Yep. And he's, he's really played a big part in that defensive shape. He's really been able to cut out passes going into Barrera up front. Here's the two goals that have been scored, and the first one is what broke the hearts. Carrasco does really well. Yeah, he does really well. Look at the, the, the defenders around the, the, in the good areas. But they dragged it out there, and you've got a whole space in front of them. Really good graphics from there, and you give the players that type of thing, they can pick their spot, and um, they're sort of not under pressure. And here you go again, look, you see, he's nice and comfortable, he faces the, the, the defensive the ball, the player draws in people in, and he's got that, that, that space in front of him to attack, you know, so he capitalises on that, and when you give a player like Montiel that, that ball is absolutely sublime, fantastic. If you're ever teaching players the kind of cross to put in, in between the onrushing goalkeeper and the defenders coming back, tremendous. Well, here's a chance now for Dominguez. 
mistake, well, more than half mistake there from Marinelli. Well, thanks to our virtual graphics boys for educating me. I didn't see the movement of the defender in the creator of the space. Some talented people upstairs, that's for sure. Never tell them, Alistair, never. There has been a change as well for Perth. Joe Tweets has come on for oh, Sam Pollard in midfield. And so Perth Fulia are trying to tweak things a little bit. Yeah, these these sort of situations now, they should, use the, they should use these type of moments for the opportunity just to get their game pattern, show what they can do going forward, practice. Game plan almost worked to try and make sure it was a scoreless, scoreless, I should say. Well, that was a, a first moment of any concern for goalkeeper Gonzalez. Attack. Good will play from attack oh, again. That's better from Dominguez coming in in front of the goalkeeper. And this is the type of thing we know that from the first game that Attack can do this type of things, but now they've been unleashed a little bit to go forward. And that was really the, the, the first semi decent opportunity or a half chance for the whole game. But there's one thing that Perth to try and do is the last 10 minutes to try and get a, a shot on goal at least. Well, that, that'll count as a shot on goal. Shot on target still, we're waiting for. Yep. It shows you if they are brave, they might be able to create one or two things. Yeah. To build from the back. Riley Warland. The rain has started to tumble. That's a good angle. The clouds are heavy and thick. And Sosa chases. Lovely touch from Sosa. Robertson. Credit to Scott Robertson. Yeah, invite Scotty Robertson to come in to get a get a throw in so we talk about the attacking play from uh, studio this but we often forget every time that first quarter got the ball and someone gets it in the midfield area they've got three or four players harassing them straight away that's one thing that the Argentinians do extremely well they can defend Acuna's cross Guerra tries to come across the front of Scott Robertson and again a good little turn good feet in getting the ball in but this time Barrera was too far in front of the near post. Will be happy to get himself on the, the score sheet. Leach. Throw into Perth Glory. In the, the afternoon rain has been prevalent in Johor Baru for the last month has started to arrive. Every day around this time. Almost like clockwork. Hagenhausen. Good play. Far too much of a Kuru. A few moments of adventure late on in the game from Perth. Gonzalez, he just bides his time. This is Marinelli. Romagnoli, his centre back partner. Leach, McLean. See what I mean by the amount of times and no pressure on the ball. And the Perth Glory player gets it. Harassing even down now. Dominguez turn, takes him past Carrasco. Does he have the pace? Well done. He does indeed. And Ignacio Dominguez into the penalty area. No foul. He's feeling non plus, but the Estudiantes have come away with the ball through Osses. Go will start again to Marinelli. Good polish play by Dominguez there. 
why not try and show that we can do his good awareness there and he knocks a pass looks like a South American in full flight <laughs> from his background but some really really good players in, a, in all countries and all they need to be doing is just giving the opportunity to play unleash they just need these type of tournaments more often because they all serve their purposes but I think the, the summary from this game is, is you can see it couple year older team from Argentina against a, a younger team from Australia and it shows but it, they've been a real pleasure to watch have Estudiantes switching the play Murray gets close Kuna and the by Murray Sam Murray's done a very very good job today as well up against some, some decent players from the likes of Montiel and so some great learning moments for the Perth Glory youngsters. as well. Kuru will chase. Attack. Looks for Bakuru. He's in. Bakuru is through. Round the goalkeeper. Can he turn it in? And the keeper um, atones for not coming out for the first ball as Tweets laid the ball back to Bakuru. And then McLean. That was a glorious opening. Joe Tweets, Dominguez, and they have shown a real invention in the last 10 minutes, and they've created two decent chances, have Perth, this one by far the best. Yeah, and that was, uh, look at the, the run from Bukuri here, runs in behind, and I would have thought he would have tried to just knock it in himself, but unselfishly knocks it back, and the keeper has really strong hands there, exceptional save from Gonzalez, done extremely well here to put off, Bukeri in the initial stage, but then he grouped himself and did everything well for the shot, but really strong strong hands from Gonzalez for his first real save of the day. Well, you were asking for a shot on goal, there it is. Get to see Joe Tweets in the 88th minute. Alejandro Sosa can't hold on to that. Murray to Leach, Wallen. Leach again. Sosa He's in there. trouble. And Sosa is through. Alejandro Sosa. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful, but why? <laughs> sheer, sheer class, the audacity of that. But it all started from the ambush from there. And look at that, just trying to dink it over. And we all thought it was going to nestle in the back of the net, but that is a really good bit of play. But look at the pressure they have here. Three of them on the ball and going forward. And here you expect him to just slot a pass, but oh no, I'm going to do a little dink over the top and it just misses. A little pitching wedge, just off. You still want him to score on the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, you do, you do. But it's just the, probably usually he would, he would finish those ones, but, but yeah, I'm sure that would have been a little bit disappointing for him not to get the sheet, but again, good little um, experience for Jack Leach on, on, on the screen there, even though like every single time there's a, there's a, a mistake or they touch the ball facing their own, towards their own goal, they really get ambushed and it's something that they will bring back to Perth and practice. He's done really well. Like you mentioned before, he does a lot of good stuff that a lot of people don't notice seen him play since he was a little 13 year old back in Perth I think he's got a good future in the game but he just needs to like anywhere they need, need these type of games here is Leach again that time making sure nobody's getting the ball off me this time still demanding it Dominguez Dominguez looks quite good on the ball as well nice and something different which is 
the attacking intent. Leach has lapped that one through. Brewera. Now he saw Stevenson off his line. Stevenson got back quickly. And there you see, you see Perth Brewery now trying to play and, and doing what they usually would do when they're back in Australia. But the fact is that every little mistake is, is, is almost causing a goal. So that's the kind of thing, the dilemma that John Gibson would have had at the beginning of the game. Two goals in two minutes, midway through the second half. Not given Estudiantes a thoroughly deserved victory. Souza, he's come on and shown bits of class. No doubt he'll be a starter in the match on Friday against Friends United here, 8.30. Just such good awareness. Looking like you're right, one on one with a goalkeeper, he would like to put that in the back of the net. Betty holds off tweets. A lot of good football going on in Johor in the next couple of weeks. There's this international tournament, which reaches a conclusion on the 1st of June. And there's two internationals for Malaysia. They take on Timor Leste in the AFC qualifiers on the 2nd and the 6th. Break off for a moment because Ishmael Attack is on the attack. There you go. Look at the number of players around the ball. Someone delaying him, and then two other people come to ambush. That was a great ball in by, by Jack Leach to put, put him through. The other football occasion in Johor tonight is, of course, JDT playing in the AFC Cup quarterfinals. Sorry, round of 16. Round of 16, yeah. It's Kaya, one-off game. That and we go, go into the long break. So it's some really good football like you mentioned in Johor. That will be a corner, Perth's first corner. So their first shot on target on the 88th minute, their first corner on the 92nd. Scotty Robertson sprints up to make sure he's in the penalty area for this. And if this isn't put into the middle onto Scotty Robertson's head, there he is. I'm sure he will create blue murder in the dressing room. Guerrera marking him. Touch type marking. Will he get the opportunity? And he's ball. Cleared at the near post. And the final whistle goes. In the end, it's been comfortable for Estudiantes. Thoroughly deserved. Many lessons absorbed by Perth. Uh, Carrasco scoring the first goal. There he is from a central midfield position. Facundo Guerrera adding the second two goals in two minutes. Third deserve, but you're happy with the lessons Perth have learned, Alistair Edwards. Yeah, there's two things I really enjoyed. It was a joy to watch the Studiandos play. Their second string seam, so to speak, played extremely well. Did the professional job, but Perth Glory defensively have been a lot better than they were in the first game. They would have come along with that. Then you saw in the last 10 minutes the kind of thing that they can do. Glory, so they can come along and out of this game with a lot of good learning moments. And to, to be fair, a 2 new result in this game was quite good for a young Glory team. Let's have a look at the best of the highlights uh, from Estudiantes match that confirmed their place in the semi-finals after two matches with a goal difference of plus six. Ahead of the nighttime match, which starts at 8:30, here's the best of the first half. And uh, Bradley Stevenson did very well in the first half with two saves. This one from the impressive uh, Chehas. Yes, Chehas is was very very good. I can't pronounce it as good as you, but there he had. He came off in the second half, but his ability to jink past people and take players on, run past them, create things was fantastic. And Montiel, who tried to get on target this time again, the great bit of wing play and some good solid hands by. Riley Stevenson, who was another improved performer, but the ability of the wing players of, of Asetiandes was, was, was the key. Yeah, Riley Stevenson will be very much involved here. This is Bruera forcing a, a decent save from Stevenson. At this time, as we approach the hour, you're wondering, this Perth team, they're young, they've been battered. They couldn't hold on, could they? No, well, they the answer was no, because then Carrasco would work his way through, but not before another near opportunity. And once again, Montiel on that wing player was fantastic on the, on the right-hand side. The ability to play those balls in behind, 
but yeah, look, see him just runs past and that kind of stuff. And this this time, they really struggled a bit with the ball played into the box, and it was that time they just almost got in the end of it. And this was when Sam set Ross Miller was off the field. Carrasco, Carrasco though got the chance 20 yards out and just bends it into the corner. Yep, and again, lessons not learned from the other night. You give these players a bit of space outside the box, and he picked his spot, curled it around the keeper, and again, this they got the pressure on the ball too late, but a good finish. So that was 1-0 on 63 minutes, and you feared that the floodgates would open there because the, the resistance had been broken. And indeed, just two minutes later, there would be a second goal operating down the right-hand side. A little bit of space for Montiel to go into, but his cross is lovely, and Bruraira gets in ahead of Robertson and makes it two. Yeah, we saw the, the guys upstairs showing us the footage here, but the movement that enabled Montiel to go forward, and this time he picked out a beautiful cross. But look at the, the area that he played the cross into there, and Barrera got in front this time of uh, Scotty Robertson for the, one of the rare times, and unluckily, um, well, luckily for Barrera, he got a good little touch on it to, to make it 2-0. There's a hint that that might have been a Robertson own goal, but never mind. Then in the last 10 minutes, Ishmael Attack got forward, and Dominguez got nearly getting on the end of that, and yes. Perth decided you may as well go for a goal. Yep, and you, like we saw in the first game, that you know Attack is uh, very, very good at taking players on, and Dominguez, when he came on, was, was very, very good. And here we are here, this is the chance of the, the game for, for Perth Glory. Bukeri, who worked ever so hard up front, unselfish here, and look at the strong hands from Gonzalez, his first real chance to, to show what he can do as a keeper in the game, because it was a first real effort, and he did it extremely well. Joe Tweets, the midfielder who's denied. Maybe the keeper could have come out and cleared this one earlier, but having uh, prevented Bakuru getting the first shot in, yeah. you're dead right, he stands up tall. Tweets does everything right, it's on target, it's going to the top corner. Decent save by the keeper. And in the last moment, uh, Souza had a chance to wrap it up for 3-0. It looks beautiful, but it missed. Yeah, yeah you can tell. His brief little cameo on the field was, was a joy to watch. You can tell he's a fantastic, but the ambush, the amount of times they can win these type of balls, and, you know, he thought, why not? I will dink it over, and you can see it just scrapes past the post. So 2-0, it finished. The match statistics, well, one shot on target, one shot off target, one corner for Perth. Look at those stats the other way, 65% possession, 13 shots off target, 18 in total, nine corners, finished 2-0, it could have been a lot more. Yep, totally dominant performance from East Indiana, it's really a joy to watch, and um, first of all, like I said before, we'll come away from this with a, a lot of learning moments. Reaction to come from the Friends International. But as you can see, rather enjoying their involvement in this Friends International Cup. It's a very youthful Perth team who have made the trip over. They've lost two out of two, but they can be proud with their performance. And we spoke to John Gibson afterwards to find out just how proud. Congratulations for the win. But in the first half, there was a lot of defences by Perth Glory. That there was a worry that uh, the goal was not coming. So, what is your opinion of the performance of your boys, especially in the first half? Bien, muchas gracias en primer lugar. Creo que ha sido un partido como lo preveíamos, partido difícil. Es, el rival propone un fútbol muy dinámico y era sabido de que si no jugábamos rápido era muy difícil encontrar los espacios. Por suerte aparecieron en el segundo tiempo. As we expected, it was a tough game. They defend very well, they have a strong team. But fortunately, in the second half, we find the space to score the goals. 
So now you 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 ten new players, only one um, remain from the last game. So what about the next games against uh, France United? Will will you be making a lot of changes again? Vamos a ver en realidad cómo terminaron los, los chicos y hay alguno con algún golpe, alguna molestia. De hecho, cuando terminó el primer tiempo tuvimos que hacer un cambio. Hay un chico con un problema en el hombro. En función de la recuperación de los que jugaron hoy, veremos cómo formamos el equipo para el próximo partido. We check how the guys feel after the first half. We have to make a sub because we have injury, so we check how he feels and then we're going to decide what's going to be the next strategy for the next match. Okay. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, what do you think of the result? Um, we came here with a game plan today and, and again it's part of our development as footballers for these young boys and it's a fantastic opportunity to play against a powerhouse like Estudiantes, you know, with a proud history. Um, and it's our first time playing against the South American opposition, so it's just a wonderful opportunity for us. And it said, as we said, we gave a 14-year-old, I think he might be 12 or 14, whatever he is, but it was fantastic even to see one of our younger players, Jack Leach, who was our number out eight today with the ponytail, it was just magnificent. It's just a, a pleasure to be at a tournament like this. I think that the, the defensive lineup, uh, the defenders were doing their job very well up to a point until the 60, 60th minute. And there was an injury to Ross Millet. So how did that have changed the formation of the team? Yeah, we got a bit scrappy after little, uh, after Ross left. He's our, one of our leaders, you know, so he's part of our um, first team with in Australia with the A-League. Um, so he's part of that group, you know, so it was really important to, to have him around. But unfortunately he didn't, but we got to for, we got to play Riley, who's the young boy, um, back into his normal position of left centre back. And he was really comp composed and it's something that we don't, we expect from the kid, you know, so we're super happy with the performance today. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Great reaction from John Gibson, Perth Glory have got themselves uh, a little bit of pride in that 2-0 defeat. They played against South American opposition for the very first time and come away with a respectable 2-0 defeat. The statistics could have mean it's 6 or 7 or 8-0, but it's actually 2-0. Estudiantes qualified for the semi-finals. We'll find out who will join them when Friends United take on Suan Blue Wings a little bit later on tonight. Look at the group. You can see Estudiantes six points in their two games. Friends won their first game 5-0. So if they beat Suan 2-0 or by two goals tonight, Estudiantes would have to beat Friends on Friday night at the 8.30 match to top the group. Friends versus Suwon coming your way 8.30 p.m. live on Astro Supersports channel 831 in HD. Friends versus Suwon Blue Wings should be worth watching. And the coverage will continue on Friday when Estudiantes take on Friends as well. Join us again later on tonight, but for now, congratulations to Estudiantes, semi-finals in the Friends International Cup.